Now we've created two charts on our dashboard. However, they are fairly static and do not allow a user to easily filter the data represented. To dynamically filter or change how data is displayed in your charts, controls can be used. We'll first create a drop-down control, which will allow us to select from a list of defined options. To create the control, we'll select Add Control, and then choose drop-down as our control type. We'll need to name this control project name. And we will select the multiple select setting. Selecting multiple select for the control will allow us to choose multiple projects at once to filter by. Next, you should select the data source the dropdown should query against. I'll use the All Atlassian Data Atlassian Data Lake connection. After you've selected a data source, you can view the data source's schema to select the column you want to filter your charts by. Because I want to filter my charts by project name, I'll open the project table and we'll select name. If you want this control to automatically be connected to any existing or new charts, then you should select the connect this control to new and existing charts. You'll then need to select an appropriate filter operator. For this example, we'll use the is one of filter operators since this is a multi-select drop-down control. We can then add this control to our dashboard and place it where we'd like it to be. Next, we can add a second control to the dashboard, which will be a calendar control. To add a calendar control to the dashboard, again select Add Control, and this time we'll select Calendar. You can change the control's name or leave it as calendar. For this example, I'll leave it as calendar. Next, you should decide the type of calendar the control should be. If it should be a date range or a singular date. Each data type option will also be able to be set up as a relative date or a fixed date. Relative dates will use our relative date variables, whereas a fixed date will be a static date as shown here. Then you can select the default start date or dates that the control will use. By default, the default start and end dates use relative date variables. Today.sub for weeks to today are the default starting and ending positions. This means the date range will be four weeks prior to today up to today's date. I'll change this to be 12 weeks prior to today and leave the default end as today. I'll select add to also add this control to the dashboard and place it next to our drop-down. To connect the calendar control to a chart, we'll need to edit one of the existing charts. Once back in Visual SQL, we can edit the existing query to add a new query filter. For this example, we will expand the issue table and use the created at column because we want to see the issues created during the date range in our calendar control. Next, we will use the between and including filter operator and then we can select the start position of our calendar and the end so that our dates are filtered from the start to end of the control. Then we'll run this query, and that is how you connect a calendar control to a chart.
This process will have to be repeated for any charts on your dashboard. Now we can save the chart back to the dashboard. You can verify that these controls have been connected to your charts by hovering over the control, selecting the ellipses, and then choosing Show Connected Charts. Any charts connected to the control will be briefly highlighted with a yellow border. Now you're ready to begin dynamically filtering your charts.